Welcome back. So far in this channel, we've covered some of the most popular math topics that you'll see on the SAT and the ACT. But now we're going to talk about the most popular one, systems of equations. That's not just hyperbole or silly clickbait. Leaf through any practice test and you're bound to see several of these questions in every single math section. That's because this topic can be tested in many different ways, from simple algebra to a complex word problem. So in this video, let's sort out all of these variations. Again, these questions are worth a lot of points on both the SAT and the ACT. So if you find this helpful, please subscribe to the channel, share this video, and destroy that like button. Go ahead, I'll wait. Hit the thumbs up, you got it? Thank you, okay. Let's get into systems of equations. We'll start easy and we'll get harder as we go. Before we start, here's the common thread of every question we're about to see. You can only solve an equation that has one variable. You can't solve an equation that has more than one variable. For example, let's look at these two equations. On the left, 3a plus 6b is 18. You can't solve that because there are no like terms to combine. But on the right, 3a plus 6a is 18. You can solve because you have the same variable. That might sound like an obvious point, but it's an important one to emphasize. We touched on this concept in video 11. Check it out here. In that video, we talked about let statements. The main point of that video was that you always want to take a situation with many variables and rewrite it with just one variable. And that's the underlying theme here as well. Let's see how. Let's start with this one. If y equals 3x minus 14 and y equals negative 2x plus 6, solve for x. Both of these equations are set equal to y. That means they have to equal each other. So you could say 3x minus 14 equals negative 2x plus 6. And then from there, combine like terms. Moving the x to the left would give 5x, and the 14 to the right would be 20. If 5x is 20, divide both sides by 5, x equals 4. So when you see two expressions set equal to the same term, such as y equals blah and y equals stuff, they have to equal each other. You're allowed to say blah equals stuff. Let's see how this comes up on a graph question. Find the points of intersection for y equals 4x minus 12 and y equals 3x minus 5. I'll give you a minute. Press pause. Give it a shot. When they want the points of intersection, it means where the lines would touch. As long as both equations equal y, you could set them equal. 4x minus 12 equals 3x minus 5. From there, we can move the x's to the left, subtracting the 3x would give us x, and adding the 12, 7, x equals 7. Now, that's just the x-coordinate, but they wanted the full point, so in order to get the y, we could take that x value of 7 and plug it in. You could use either equation, it doesn't matter. Let's use the first one. So in that first equation, y equals 4x minus 12, we can plug in the 7. 4 times 7 minus 12. That would be 28 minus 12, or 16. That's the y-coordinate, so the full point of intersection would be 7, 16. So this is one type of system. When two expressions are set equal to the same term, then you could set those expressions equal. Now let's make things a little harder. Here's another variation of a system. Solve for a and b. 2a equals 24 minus 3b, and 4a plus b equals 18. We can't use the approach from the last two examples because these expressions are not set equal to the same term, so we have to try something else. There are actually two approaches you can take here. One is called substitution and one is called elimination. Let's start with substitution on two questions and then we'll come back to it with elimination in a few minutes. The concept of substitution is that you want to isolate a variable. In the system above, which variable is the best one to isolate? The b. The reason why is because it doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. In other words, we can get that term by itself very easily. All we need to do is subtract the 4a to the other side. So let's do that. b equals 18 minus 4a. And that's our new name for b, so to speak. In other words, wherever we see b in that first equation, we can plug in that expression 18 minus 4a. So subbing in that expression to the first equation would now say 2a equals 24 minus 3, subbing in 18 minus 4a. And this is why this approach is called substitution. You're substituting an expression in place of a variable. 
And before we keep going, think about why this new equation is better than the first one. Because we went from having two variables to just one variable. Instead of an A and a B, we only have A's. And that means you can solve it. So let's distribute that negative 3. Multiplying through would give us 2A equals 24 minus 54 plus 12A. Remember, negative times a negative gives a positive. Combining like terms, negative 10A equals negative 30, so A equals 3. Now, the question wanted us to solve for both A and B. In order to solve for B, we could do the same thing that we did on the last question. You would take that value for A, 3, and plug it into either equation. But we're actually going to see this question again in a few minutes, so I don't want to do that just yet. But if you were going to solve for B, you would take 3 and plug it in for A. Let's try another. Solve for x and y. 2x plus 3y is 6, and x plus 4y equals 13. I'll give you a minute. Press pause. Give it a try. Again, the first thing you want to think about is which variable is the best one to isolate, the one without the coefficient. So in this case, that would be the x. We can get that x by itself by subtracting the 4y to the other side. That would give us x equals 13 minus 4y. Now, wherever that x appears in the other equation, we could now sub it in. Plugging in that expression would now say 2, in the parentheses, 13 minus 4y plus 3y equals 6. And again, now we only have one variable rather than two. Distributing through, 26 minus 8y plus 3y equals 6. Combining like terms, negative 5y equals negative 20, y equals 4. Now the question also wanted us to solve for x. I won't make you do the math for that just yet, but we would do the same thing from before. You would take that y value of 4 and plug it into either equation. That would give you your value for x. So substitution involves isolating a variable and then using that expression to plug into the other equation. Hence, substitution. But there's another approach we could take as well. And this one is particularly popular on both tests, especially on the SAT. Let's take a look. Let's look at that same question from a moment ago, but instead of substitution, let's now try another approach. Again, solve for a and b, and here are the two equations. Another approach you can take is to stack up the variables until one disappears. Some of my students call this elimination, others call it combination. But whatever your high school calls it, the process is the same. The first step is to rewrite the equations so that like variables are stacked on top of each other. In other words, the a on the a, the b on the b, and the numbers on the numbers. So we could do that by taking that negative 3b in the first equation and adding it to the other side. By doing that, here's how it would look. 2a plus 3b equals 24. And now we could write the other equation directly under that. And now we have the variables stacked on top of their partner. The next step is to make one of the variables disappear. And in order to do that, you need to make the coefficients the same. Now, you could do this with either variable. For purposes of this example, let's think about how we could eliminate the a terms. On top, we have a 2a, and on the bottom, we have a 4a. If we can get those coefficients to match, we could get the a terms to cancel out, and we could do that by multiplying the first equation by 2. So multiplying the entire equation by 2 would give us 4a plus 6b equals 48, and writing the other equation under it would be 4a plus b equals 18. And look at what we have now a 4a stacked on top of a 4a. That means if we subtracted down each column, the a terms would disappear. And that's what we're going for. We've gone from two variables to one variable. So let's subtract down each column. 4a minus 4a would cancel out. 6b minus b would give us 5b. And 48 minus 18 would give us 30. If 5b is 30, divide both sides by 5. b equals 6. Again, notice the main theme. We took a situation with many variables and rewrote it so that it only had one variable. And in order to do that, we needed to manipulate the equations so that the like terms were on top of each other, and then we got one of the coefficients to cancel out. Now in that previous example, we subtracted down the columns. But you don't always necessarily subtract. It depends. Let's look at two different examples. In the equations on the left here, notice that b and the negative b. The signs are already different. This means you'd actually be adding down the columns. Adding different signs would make the b terms cancel out. But on the right, we have a positive 4x and another positive 4x. That means we would subtract down the columns. So add the equations when the signs are opposite. 
and subtract the equations when the signs are the same. This is an extremely popular topic on both tests. Let's do another. Question six, solve for x and y. This is the same question from before, but now I want to use elimination instead of substitution. Take a crack at this one without my help. Press pause, see if you can solve. You have the option to get rid of either variable. However, in this case, it's far easier to get rid of the x terms. We have an x and a 2x, so we can easily multiply that second equation by 2 so that the coefficients match. So let's do that. Multiplying the second equation by 2 would now give us 2x plus 8y equals 26. And look at what we have now. We have the equation stacked up, and both of the x terms have the same coefficient. We can get rid of them by subtracting. Subtracting down each column, 2x minus 2x would disappear. 3y minus 8y would be negative 5y, and 6 minus 26 is negative 20. So if negative 5y is negative 20, divide through by negative 5, y equals 4. So just to recap, the theme of elimination is to stack up the variables and then get one of the coefficients to be the same. That way you could make that variable disappear. Now let's kick it up a notch and make things a little harder on a word problem. Here's a harder variation of what we just saw. Question seven. Children and adults go on a museum field trip. Each child ticket costs $5 and each adult ticket costs $7. If a total of $534 was spent and 100 people went in total, how many children went? This question is a little harder because they're not telling you what the system is. You need to figure it out on your own. So I'll give you a second. Press pause and see if you could translate this word problem into a system. We saw this a lot in video 10 where we talked about widgets and how to translate a word problem into algebra. Check it out for more help, but I'll give you a hand with this one. Let's call the children C and the adults A. Why not? So incorporating the money, if each child ticket is $5 and each adult ticket is $7, that would be 5C plus 7A equals 534. That gives us the total cost. And now just an equation for the people, C plus A equals 100. The first equation represents the money that was spent, and the second equation represents the people. Once we have that system, it could be solved with either of the approaches that we just saw, substitution or elimination. You can use whichever approach you find easier. So I'll give you a minute. Press pause and use the approach that you prefer. Let's first solve with substitution, then we'll come back to elimination. Remember, the question is asking for children, so that means we want to get everything in terms of C, and in order to do that, we need to isolate A. So, looking at that second equation, we can isolate the A by subtracting the C from both sides. That would give us A equals 100 minus C, and that's our new name for A, so to speak. We can use that and sub it into the first expression. So that would give us 5C plus 7, 100 minus C equals 534. From there, we can distribute and solve. 5c plus 700 minus 7c equals 534. Combine like terms, negative 2c equals negative 166, c is 83. Now, that was for those of you who preferred substitution, but elimination would also work. Let's see how. Going back to our original system, here it is. Remember with elimination, you wanna start by stacking up the variables, which we've done. What comes next? You wanna get one of the variables to cancel out. The question is, which one? So remember, they want to solve for children. That means we need to get rid of the A terms so we could solve for the C. And we could get rid of the A by taking the second equation and multiplying it through by seven. Multiplying the second equation through by seven would give us seven C plus seven A equals 700. And now if we subtracted the equations, we could get the A terms to disappear. Subtracting down each column, five C minus seven C would be negative two C. Subtracting 7a minus 7a would cancel out, and then the final number would be negative 166. Divide through by the negative 2, c equals 83. So, it doesn't matter which approach you take. In both cases, we get that the children are 83. As long as you do your math correctly, you'll always get the same answer. So just to recap, in one type of system, you might see something like y equals blah and y equals stuff. That means those terms have to be equal, blah equals stuff. In another type of system, you use substitution. That's when you isolate a variable and you plug it into the other equation. Or in elimination, also called combination, you stack up the variables. And then from there, you get one of the coefficients to be the same. 
And some of my students are even taught to approach these questions with a matrix, which you can. I personally don't want to overcomplicate things, but if you find that easier, go ahead. Any of the approaches above will get you the right answer. Now let's pretend that nothing from this video made sense to you. Well, I tried. <laughs> but seriously, I do hope that you found these examples helpful. But if you're watching this now and even more confused than you were 10 minutes ago, then check out my video 9 here. In that video, we talked about how to cheat your way around these questions. Okay, it's not really cheating, but it's a great backdoor for how to handle these types of questions if you find the algebra too complicated. Check it out. But definitely keep practicing with systems of equations as well. It's a skill that you definitely need to have. You will see these types of questions on every single test. Thanks for watching. And remember, plan your work, work your plan. Thank you.